New Center Maine presents Agree to Disagree with Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling, an ongoing podcast on Maine politics. Phil, a Republican, and Ethan, a Democrat, are two of Maine's most well-known and respected political analysts. Every week, and sometimes daily, get new episodes discussing all things political and how it affects Mainers like you. Welcome to episode eight of the Agree to Disagree podcast with Phil and Ethan, a weekly podcast on New Center, Maine from now through Election Day. This week, uh, we are debating the start of the Republican convention, the end of the Democratic convention. We got all kinds of stuff going on. But before that, how are you doing this week, Phil? I am doing fair to partly sunny. Hey, have you noticed that the uh, touch of fall has descended upon us? It did, although yesterday like 91 degrees in Portland. I went for a bike ride. I did what you do all the time. I went for a little bike ride and whoo, sweaty. Well, it's, it, that is that little tinge of chill in the air is an indication that we are closer to election day. Mm, that's true. You know, Labor Day coming up pretty soon. That's the official kickoff of political season for uh, those of us who do this kind of stuff. So that's exciting. A couple weeks away. Yeah, and, and that's the beginning of the typical campaign season. So we'll finally get a chance to take a look at what Collins and Gideon are doing in their campaign ads. Yeah. Oh, oh, and, oh and that's right. All those billionaires from out of state have been in here buying up our, our voter attention for what? Two years mm. now? year now? Uh, I think about a year. I think about a year is when they first yeah. started going up. But yeah, and once Labor Day goes by, you're not going to be able to just write off those polls anymore, say they don't matter. Oh, yeah, Collins is losing, <laughs> but it's August. And, you know, I'll wait till after Labor Day. Well, that's what you always do. And here it comes, buddy. So, yeah. So you got anything for us to discuss this week? I do indeed. I got the end of the Democratic convention, the beginning of the Republican convention. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Susan Collins this week, not endorsing uh, Trump or going to the convention. On the flip side, her getting the endorsement of former President George Bush. Sarah Gideon rolled out a new health care plan. We got lobster tariffs being lifted. Your favorite ranked choice voting. You're going to beat me up on that one a little bit because you called that pretty well last time. Uh, let's see, extending unemployment benefits, tons of stuff, tons of stuff for us to get to. Well, plus, plus we have to play a little, just a little, love it, hate it, or wake me up when it's over. And Schoolsy, who is our producer extraordinaire, is going to tell us how I did on the hot seat for last week's Nailed It or Failed It. Yeah, I'm sure you did just fine. I gave you a whole bunch of softballs. You probably were six for six, I imagine. <laughs> so uh, we'll find out if uh, that's actually the case, but. All right, Schoolsy, kick us off. We're ready to go. As Speaker of the House, I solemnly and sadly open the debate. Mayor, did you hear the news? What's Republicans that? have officially nominated Donald J. Trump as their presidential nominee and Mike Pence as the vice president nominee. I know, big surprise. Mm. So what are your takeaways from the Republican convention? Uh, well, you know, besides the fact that uh, ratings are way down, nobody's watching, and he only seems to be able to get family members to speak during prime time to endorse him, uh, I'm not too impressed. Technically, it's been nice, I will say that. Uh, I will give some kudos for sure. They're doing a good job, of, I think, of feeding the base in terms of giving them some... Um, you know, some fodder for why Trump deserves a second election, a uh, second term. But in terms of really trying to reach moderate voters, very hard right wing, you know, totally pro-life conservative positions that are, you know, protectionist, America first, just no attempt to reach out to the middle at all in the first uh, first few days of the convention. And, you know, the propaganda has just been through the roof. You know, the fact checkers out there just... They don't have time to keep up with the number of falsehoods that are being sent out by this convention. You know, they said on the first night alone, more falsehoods put out there. And I'm using a nice word by saying falsehoods instead of the word I should use, lies, <laughs> more than the entire Democratic convention. Look, everybody expects a little bit of extravagance, a little bit of hyperbole, but this is over the top. So who's doing the fact checking this liberal media that's in the back pocket of the Democrat national committee. They're doing the fact checking. I uh, get it. Okay. So putting all that aside, here's, here's what I saw. I saw a extremely well done, highly personal touch to every speaker who's been there from Herschel Washer Walker, a black man 
basically saying to America, you're insulting me, a black man, for thinking that I would be friends with the racists for over three decades. Then you saw on the second night, there was uh, the president swearing in five new citizens who came through our borders legally, became American citizens. And then you saw the young college student who was, uh, you know, played for a political hit job by wearing his Make America Great Again hat while an Indian was banging a drum in his face. And he was able to show that that was all trumped up, no pun intended. And the media has had to basically compensate him for what they've done to this young man. And then we had a lobsterman from uh, from Maine, who heralded the fact that the president said he was going to get the tariffs listed on lobsters to the European market. He's opened up the fishing ground. So I, I could go on, but I think if you cared enough to tune in, what you heard was America speaking to America. Hey, look, you know, I, I've watched every minute of it, and obviously uh, I come at it from the left perspective, but they're just it, nobody out there who's moderate is looking at this thing so far. I mean, even the lobsterman from Maine, great, he got up there, but he said he didn't know if he could support Trump in 2016. You know why? Because he wasn't sure that Trump was conservative enough. And now he's saying, okay, Trump is conservative enough for me, so therefore I'm going to support him. We'll get into the lobster tariffs latest, later in the podcast, but this is a this is a convention that is appealing directly and solely to the Republican hard right base. That's not going to do it. All right, buddy. In her re-election campaign, second subject here, Susan Collins has made clear she will not take a position in the presidential race. Unlike 2016, unlike 2012, unlike 2008, 2004, 2000, 1996. She is saying she will not endorse Donald Trump or come out against him. Um, she's also not scheduled to speak at the Republican convention, and she appears to be going out of her way to not even be seen near a Trump sign. Regardless of whether you think this is, um, you know, um, the right thing for her to say, do you think it's smart politically for her to stay out of the presidential race? Well, let's let's uh, put some context into this. When the Republican convention met for the George W. Bush nomination. She didn't attend that meeting to focus on her re-election campaign. So, you know, I, I understand the way in which you have framed this, and I would agree with you that she's going out of her way not to be um, endorsing and attending. But I think that is good strategy because the opportunity for her to separate and distinguish herself from the campaign that she has to run from the campaign of the president I think is a wise strategy. But I, I, I do give her credit for this. She has a history of working with every president who's been elected since she's been to Washington. She didn't vote for Barack Obama, but I think even you would agree that she found ways to engage and support the administration to help them where she could. And as a result, I would say she deserves credit for working with the president regardless of their party affiliation. Uh, you know, I, I would agree with you. I think it's good politics. She's doing everything she can to try to pretend she's not a Trump supporter because she needs moderate middle of the road votes, but it's simply not going to work. You know, what what has come across now to Maine people is that she's really changed. And if you look at every other presidential race, she's been willing to say wh whether she supports the candidate or in 2016 when she didn't. Uh, she's been willing to say what her position is, and she often has had this reputation of being wishy-washy. This is feeding right into that position. She, you know, she used to be at least a little more moderate, and she used to be willing to stand up when the Republican Party was doing something wrong. I know you have a lot of respect for that. You've done that in your own career, and now she's simply unwilling to do that. And um, I, I get it. I get the politics of it except I actually think it's the wrong thing for her to do. She ought to be engaging, letting people know where she stands because she has to represent us. Well, I, I just as a parting sort of thought on this, if you are right, and uh, I'm not disagreeing that you aren't, why wouldn't she come out and endorse the president? She needs the votes up in the second congressional district, which is clearly more supportive of the president than the first congressional district. And so if, if, if her path to victory is to make sure she has a strong outpouring uh, of support in the second district. Why not endorse him? 
Well, it's because Trump is down by 15 points in the state of Maine. And there are a lot of voters, 10 to 15 percent of voters who are voting right now for Joe Biden and Susan Collins. And she doesn't want to alienate those people. So she's sort of playing this game of trying to have it both ways. But I think voters are going to see right through that because she didn't vote to impeach. She supported his policies on tax cuts, supported Kavanaugh. She's been there for Trump every step of the way. She's trying. It's just not working. Strim, the European Union is dropping import taxes on live and frozen lobster products from the United States for at least five years. This will obviously be a big boost to Maine and our lobster industry. You ready to reverse course on your prediction that Trump loses Maine? Yeah, I don't think so. Look, this is a good thing, but you've got to understand, you know, the lobster industry was doing very well under the Obama administration until the trade war started with China. And that's when it really started to plummet. That's been the most damage to our lobster industry. And that is still going on. You know, he, he's in this trade war on tariffs between China and we're getting hammered. You know, some people talk 80 percent of uh, what we were able to export before is uh, has been cut, not being exported anymore to uh, to that country. And uh, until he fixes that piece, our lobster industry just is not going to be able to survive. So while certainly this is a good step, it is just a, a drop in the bucket of what needs to happen in order for our industry to come back and thrive the way it needs to thrive. Well, as a wise Asian soothsayer once said a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step and and trump has been able to move this discussion many steps towards the ultimate we would like to see the previous administration it wasn't even on their radar screen and and back to your comment a moment ago about susan collins and her working with the president whoever he or she is do you think if she wasn't working with the president of the United States that this issue would get on the agenda, let alone action taken by it? Oh, well, do I think politics played into whether or not Trump achieved this? Uh, certainly politics played into it. And certainly, you know, he came up here, he made a stop in the second CD. He needs the second CD. There's a lot of lobster industry up there. He certainly is trying to help Susan Collins. And that's all part of why Susan Collins is unwilling to do what Maine people uh, are going to do on election day, which is uh, vote against Donald Trump. We'll see. What's up? All right, buddy. You ready for a little uh, love it, hate it, or wake me when it's over? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is your favorite part, I know. Yeah. Yeah. You got your yawn machine out, because usually you <laughs> like to uh, wake me when it's over with all the shenanigans of politicians in August and Maine. All right. Speaking of uh, politicians in August in Maine with shenanigans, former president and first lady George and Laura Bush have endorsed Susan Collins for U.S. Senate. Phil, I'm sure you love it. Does it matter? What uh, do you think? I I, I do love it. Uh, I, I think it will matter just to reinforce for those uh, in the first congressional district who have an affinity for the former president and, and first lady. I, I do think it will um, um, have an effect for her. But is it going to energize the campaign across the state? No. Hmm. But I do love it. Ethan, your fair city is discussing a $32 million tax break for a private developer to build 265 units of housing, almost half of which will be deemed affordable. Mr. Mayor, you loving, hating this, or want to be woken up when it's over? Oh, I am hating this one, buddy. You know, th this kind of corporate welfare just drives me bananas. The amount of money, $32 million. If you put $32 million into our housing trust, you would not get 121 units of housing. You would get close to 3,000 units of housing. This is just absurd. If you want to build affordable housing, put it in the zoning, make it clear, inclusionary zoning, require it. Do not give away taxpayer money for this stuff. Just the wrong path to go. Phil, Donald Trump's sister is heard secretly recorded, is heard on secretly recorded tapes saying that her brother has quote unquote no principles and quote unquote, you can't trust him. Love it, hate it, wake me when it's over. 
Well, I, I actually hate this because this is the sort of stuff that is great fodder for the the media and the people who just don't care for Trump for any reason whatsoever. It's now the second family member who's come out with, um, you know, the spoken or written word that is negative to the president. But I, I think, you know, the American people have either accepted or rejected him. And I don't think there's going to be anything that comes out of family conversations that's going to change anyone's mind. I hate it. And yet another I told you so moment, the court ruled that ranked choice voting for the presidential race will indeed be placed back on the November ballot as Matt Dunlap, the Secretary of State, wrongfully threw out almost 1,000 ballot signature, petition signatures Tell me, Strim, you loving this? <laughs> uh, maybe hating this or mm. wake you up when it's over? I'm going to say wake me up when it's over. And this is ah, why Okay, I'm going to say wake me up when it's over because I don't think this thing is done. What I understand is ah. uh, there may be some few more legal uh, maneuvers going on in the next few days and that uh, we won't actually know the answer to this until the end of the week or the beginning of next week. So let me know when it's over. Oh, wow. That's interesting. It's printed. They better hurry up if they're going to object. I know. <laughs> Not much time left. Uh, all right, Phil. The state has now extended unemployment uh, from 39 weeks to 52 weeks. Remember, originally, it's 23 weeks. Then it went to 39, now 52. A full year for unemployed workers in Maine. Phil, you loving this? You hating it? Or wake me up when it's over. I'm actually loving this because the government imposed the the burden on the private sector that put our economy into the doldrums uh, or the sp downward spiral. So uh, I'm loving this because the men and women who are in need of unemployment benefits, they're not the reason that their jobs got uh, disoriented. I love it. All right. Good for you. Sarah Gideon has rolled out her health care plan with a public option to buy into Medicare, as if that plan wasn't financially strained enough. <laughs> it's true. I can only imagine there's only one thing. You love it. You don't hate it. You don't want to be woken up when it's over, right? I definitely don't hate it. I definitely don't want to be woken up when it's over. The only caveat I would make is that she should have, uh, I would have liked to see her go even further, Medicare for all. But look, what you she would. chose, Fuck I would for, yeah, I know. Um, you know, it's clear this is a plan that will be very closely aligned with what Joe Biden wants to do. And um, Joe Biden wins. If Sarah Gideon wins, they're going to want to work together in the Senate. But I would like to have other people in the Senate pushing uh, Joe to try to create something that will cover more people and reduce costs even better. And that is Medicare for all, no doubt about it. All right, that was uh, our <coughs> agree or disagree segment. Now, failed, nailed it or failed it. Last week, Phil, you were on the hot seat with six total softballs, as I said earlier. So I'm assuming an easy six for six. Are you ready to be judged by the one and only Schoolsy? Yes, indeed. Schoolsy, are you ready to judge? Schoolsy, are you ready to judge? Yes, sir. <laughs> there he is. All right. All right. Here we go. Here are the questions from last week. Agree or disagree in the next week? Donald Trump will swap out Mike Pence for Nikki Haley. Phil said disagree. Jeff, did he nail it or fail it? Nailed it. All right. One for one. Nice call on that one. Agree or disagree? Joe Biden's convention bump will be plus two points, expanding his lead over Trump from eight to ten. By the end of the week, Phil said, agree. Jeff, did he nail it or fail it? Failed it. Oh, oh, oh. That, oh come you on. Were you were close, man. He oh. got up to 9.5 was the uh, highest I saw. Well, 9.5 uh, is close enough to 10. <laughs> that's Republican thinking right there, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, agree or disagree, Republicans will attack Joe Biden by name at least a dozen times on the opening night of their convention. My God, Phil said agree. Schools, you don't even have to tell us. They, they, they attacked him by name a dozen times within the first 12 minutes. But Nailed it! That's it. Nailed it! <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> 
It was brutal, brutal. All right, agree or disagree, Republicans will average more viewers on their opening night than Democrats did on theirs, which was a little over 18.6 million. Phil said disagree. Jeff, did he nail it or fail it? Failed it. Oh, Phil, yes. Yeah. Slow opening night, man. You had under 16 million. What was that all about? Unbelievable. I, I don't know. I, I'm shocked. You, you know, you did have, you did like quadruple the C-SPAN audience compared to the Democrats. So <laughs> what was apparently, that from 300 yeah. to 900? <laughs> exactly. It was something like that. It was literally like 1,000 to 4,000 or something. <laughs> but you can own that one. Agree or disagree? Now that we've had another COVID outbreak due to a big party in Millinocket, Governor Mills will be using her executive powers to come down with new restrictions. Phil said disagree. Jeff, did he nail it or fail it? Yep. Good one on that one. No extra government yep. regulation. You're happy about that? Yes, always. Uh, agree or disagree. Final question. COVID will penetrate the NBA bubble and at least one player will have to be quarantined. Phil said agree. I think he said this on a hunch. Jeff, did he nail it or fail it? Failed it. Oh, that was funny. You guess. I, I had no analytical ability to work with. You had no inside information. You weren't able to like, no. you know, get, get a little get Jason Tatum to drink no. a little COVID or something? No. No. All right. Three right, three wrong. You fell off your game a little well, bit. You were four about, and two in your first week. Three right, two wrong, and one too close to call. <laughs> Buddy, 9.5 just ain't 10, no matter how you do it. It just ain't. <laughs> All right, Ethan. You're back right. in the hot seat this week. Whew. I'm ready. Did my push-ups this morning, buddy. I'm ready. All right. Stream all we need from you. Just remember... Agree or disagree, and a brief, a brief mm. rewind. Agree okay. or disagree, Joe Biden did not mention Trump by name once in his speech. President Trump will do the same or not mention Joe. I am going to, against my better, I am going to agree. He will not mention Joe in his speech. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Agree or disagree? Donald Trump's convention bounce will reduce Biden's lead to under eight percentage points. I'm actually, I'm going to agree with that. I think Trump will uh, bring that margin down wow. and it'll come back. Everything tightens, everything tightens, but I think, yeah, I'll agree. Agree or disagree? Democrat Joe Kennedy will defeat Senator Ed Markey in the Massachusetts primary on Tuesday. Oh, this one is so tough. You know, here's the deal. A Kennedy has never lost in Massachusetts. Never lost in Massachusetts. I oh. think that streak is going to hold. Uh, I, really? I kind of think that Kennedy is going to uh, Kennedy's going to win. Yep. Agree or disagree? Jared Golden, who has remained silent so far in the presidential race, just like Susan Collins, will endorse Joe Biden. Yeah, I, I think he will. I agree. I think he's going to endorse. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Agree or disagree? After the final court wranglings, ranked choice voting will be on the ballot this fall. Oh, this is a big one because I told you it's going back to court. I, you know, the courts really do defer to the voters, so I, I'm going to say disagree on this one. Uh, it's a it's a toss up, though. I kind I hope the court. I hope the court. I hope. I hope I get this one wrong. Wow. You wanting to yeah. be wrong? That in and of itself newsworthy <laughs> agree or disagree while your knicks watch from my home my celtics will take at least two of the first three against the raptors the knicks are going to watch from your home yeah you <laughs> you need to no, invite me to these parties what, what i meant to say is while your knicks watch from their home as they're not yeah. playing will mm -hmm. my celtics take at least two of the first three against the raptors I don't think so, buddy. Raptors, are, Raptors are uh, smoking good. You got some injuries on that team. You guys did remarkably well in the first round, but the uh, the Sixers were uh, a little bit depleted. So I don't wow. think you're going to take two out of the first three. Okay. The clock has run out. The buzzer is sounding. Okay, Ethan. As we do each week in honor of Maine's bicentennial year, we are going to ask a Maine political trivia question. Here is last week's question. When was the last time, though, I'm sorry, when was the last year Democrats did, did not hold at least one of the following seats in Maine? Governor, Congressperson, Speaker of the House, or President of the Maine Senate? 
You know, uh, to be honest, I was pretty sure I knew the answer to the one when you offered it last week because uh, it was around a hero of mine that I had never actually met. I met some of his family members, but the year was 1955. Is that right? That's right. You're right. Yep. You're correct. Uh, the iconic Ed Muskie got the Dems back on the board after having been skunked, listen to this, for almost 20 years prior. From the mid-1930s to 1955, not a single Democrat held one of the top seats in Maine. And honestly, there was only a few years between 1915 and 1955 that Democrats held one or two of those seats. That's almost 40 years of purely Republican rule. Talk about the good old days, huh, Ethan? Mm, I tell you, it's good the state has sort of seen the light since Ed Muskie got in there. And since then, we've been holding at least one Democratic seat. No doubt we're going to at least, well, we'll keep Janet Mills for sure. Shelley's not going anywhere for sure. Angus, so that won't be a Republican seat. So I'm feeling pretty good. We're not going to lose the House or the Senate. But boy, since 1955, the state has definitely been a little more enlightened than it was before that. So uh, just for the record, uh, yeah. knowing how much Ed Muskie was your icon, uh, yeah. I had I had the opportunity to meet him on many occasions. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard he was uh, he was uh, he could be a little bit um, a little crotchety, a little grumpy sometimes, <laughs> but uh, pretty, but also could be personable. Is that is that a fair yeah. statement? Yeah, he could turn on the charm when he needed the votes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I heard when he was in the mood. <laughs> I heard he had huge hands too. He did. Huge. Yeah. Did he? Big face, wow. big long face. <laughs> I wish I could have met him for sure. No doubt about it. All right, buddy. Here's this week's trivia question. This week's trivia question is What year did Governor Baxter buy the park and donate it to Maine? And what was his motivation? That's kind of I, an interesting question. You came up with this question. Yeah, what was your I, impulse behind this one? Well, I just know the backstory, uh, and I don't want to reveal too much for our viewers, but uh, mm. uh, Governor Baxter was motivated in a way that basically said, uh, all a right, little different. Gonna, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to do this myself. And, and he was motivated in a way that people will be surprised? I think so, yeah. Yeah, all right. It's not because he was a socialist and just wanted to share the fruits of the pro proletariat with uh, all the people? <laughs> I think no. he was a Republican, wasn't he? <laughs> he was indeed, buddy. Yeah, but Imagine you Republicans that. were a little more a, reasonable back in those days. A Republican governor. <laughs> giving Portland. land. Yeah, Portland. giving land. I know. That's awesome, buddy. Awesome. All right, uh, Donald, tell us, how do we do this week? And you're fake news. Category you are fake news. See you yeah, next week, like, folks. Sounds like the Republican convention. <laughs> See you next week.